Hey devs, and welcome back to week five of mobile application development with Android. And this week, we're going to be refactoring our app's UI to be a little bit more composable. And the way we're going to go about that is using fragments. Fragments are a, a means of encapsulating parts of our user interface and being able to reuse them down the line. And we'll get into more explanation a bit later. So as usual, we're going to start off here with a project demo to show how we will be updating our weather app this week. And then we're going to dive right into fragments. And specifically, we'll look at how you can build composable UI using fragments, what their use case is, what problems they solve, and how to get started using fragments in your own application. So for our project demo, we will go ahead and switch over to our emulator and take a look at what we'll be building this week. So here we have our weather app that we are familiar with at this point. And as usual, we'll go ahead and enter in a zip code here. This time, however, when we enter the zip code, we'll see that our forecast data is now in a full screen list. We still have uh, our, our nice touch feedback here. Uh, the UI is updated a little bit, um, nothing too major there. However, we do have this little floating action button down at the bottom. If we click that floating action button, will be taken back to the location entry screen. So we have a nice separation between these two components of the UI. And if we click on one of these list items, we're still taken to the forecast details screen. So this doesn't look all that different. However, the way that these screens are implemented under the hood has changed quite a bit. Um, and that's what we're gonna be really focusing on this week. The list screen here and the location entry screen here uh, are both now implemented using fragments, which lets us encapsulate all that code that we before were uh, putting into our activity. And now it is being put into a fragment and we can compose multiple fragments together in a single screen or add and swap fragments out of a single activity. So it gives us more flexibility in how we build our user interfaces. So as part of our uh, demo here, we'll just outline some of the key points here one more time. We're going to create a location entry fragment to store the location uh, entry screen that we've been used to. We'll also create a current forecast fragment to display that list of forecast data. We're going to create an app navigator interface to help us uh, navigate between these fragments on different uh, button clicks and such. And then we'll add a floating action button in the bottom right corner of the screen so that we have a means of getting back to the location entry screen after we've shown some forecast data. So that's the high level points of what we'll be working on this week. Like I said, not a lot of visual changes or feature changes, but underneath the hood, the code will change a fair amount and it's going to set us up nicely for next week, which will be leveraging fragments quite a bit more. So what exactly are fragments? Well, a, a simple way to describe fragments is a means of reusing uh, pieces of user interface. So for example, in our weather app, we have our screen that has our kind of our icon, our label, and then the edit text to enter the zip code. Now imagine if we wanted to reuse that on multiple screens. Rather than having to re-implement that from scratch each time, we could put all of that UI and logic into a fragment and then reuse that fragment on different activity screens. So a fragment is a reusable portion of UI that can be composed together within a single activity. Now there's kind of three uh, main concepts here with fragments. So there's the fragment itself, which has its own layout file, very similarly to an activity. Um, and a fragment also has its own life cycle, which again is very similar to the activity life cycle that we're already familiar with. You can add a fragment to an activity using XML, or you can programmatically add and remove fragments from an activity. But as we learned before, an activity is that high level container for what's on the screen. So an activity is what will ultimately be containing these fragments. Now we also have what's called a fragment manager. This is a class that the, the activity is in control of. And the fragment manager 
helps us add and remove fragments and helps us ultimately control which fragments are visible on the screen at any given time. And uh, finally, when we are uh, controlling what's on the screen using the Fragment Manager, when we are adding, removing, replacing a fragment, we do this using what's called a fragment transaction. So any individual sort of update to what fragments are uh, on the screen are encapsulated into this fragment transaction. Um, and this is actually very straightforward. There's not a lot of code involved with this, and we will see how to do this a little bit later on. Now to help illustrate the concept of fragments in this composable UI, let's look at this little diagram here. So imagine we have a, a simple screen here, and we might have it broken down into several individual fragments like this. We might have one larger fragment that is controlling everything on the screen. That fragment might then itself be showing different fragments. It might be in a list, maybe a, a horizontal pager, but each of those individual elements could be its own fragment. So you can have one activity that has a single fragment, or it could have multiple fragments. And, and really, a fragment can have its own fragments internally. Now that gets a little bit complicated. Uh, we're not gonna really get into that in this course, but it just goes further to illustrate the concept that fragments are very composable, meaning you can group them together in different combinations depending on which screen you're on, which use case. You may even want different fragments depending on whether you are on a phone or a tablet. That's actually a very common use case for fragments. In fact, that's why fragments were invented in the first place. Um, because on a tablet, maybe you want one fragment that shows a list of emails and you want another fragment on the screen in a larger portion of the screen that shows the individual email that is currently clicked. This is referred to as a master detail view. So the, the main point here that I'm just trying to drive home is that fragments encapsulate individual pieces of UI. They encapsulate the logic for controlling that UI and then you can add and remove fragments as needed based on current uh, configurations and uh, requirements. So to add a fragment to a screen, there's a couple options. We can do it directly in XML. So imagine we are in our activity main XML here. We could add a fragment element like this. We would give it an ID. We would then specify the name of the fragment class that should be instantiated for that XML. And then of course we need to give it a width and height. So this would add a location entry fragment to our activity main XML file. And we'll see what this looks like in code a little bit later on. Next up, we could add a fragment programmatically. And so this demonstrates both the, the fragment manager and the fragment transaction. So within main activity or any other activity, we could get a reference to the support fragment manager then we'll call the begin transaction method. Now everything that is happening after begin transaction is then defining that individual transaction. So in this case, we are going to add a fragment to the container that has an ID of root. So fragments have to be added to some type of view group, just like any other view. So by defining the container and then the fragment, we've now said we're going to add this piece of UI to our screen. And then finally, once we've defined what will be in that fragment transaction, we will call commit. And this essentially processes the transaction and starts the process of adding or removing any fragments to the screen. Now I mentioned before that the fragment fragments have their own life cycle. And so here is a very overwhelming diagram of the activity life cycle put next to the fragment life cycle. And so I, I highlight this simply to show that there are a lot of similarities between the two life cycles. They mirror each other in many ways. However, this is very overwhelming, and I don't want to get too caught up in the details of this large diagram. So we're going to pare this down and look at just some of the most relevant fragment life cycle methods here. These are some of the ones we're going to look at in our code this week. So for a fragment, the first potentially relevant lifecycle method is onAttach. Uh, this is called when our fragment has actually been um, added to an activity. 
Now, the next one that is relevant to us is on create view. This is going to give us our chance to inflate the layout for our particular fragment. So this maps quite closely to what we usually think of in, in activities on create. Then, just like in uh, an activity, we have on start and on resume methods, and those have essentially the same meaning as they do in an activity. When some when a fragment is coming onto the screen, we're getting started, and then when it's active, it's in the resumed state. And now again, going backwards, if a fragment is moved out of the screen, we have on pause, then eventually it's stopped. We then have a destroy view when the, the fragment view itself is actually destroyed, meaning it's unlikely to quickly come back into the screen. And then if the activity itself is actually being destroyed, we have uh, on detach. And this is called when the, the fragment is being completely removed from the activity. So these are they're, they're very similar to the activity life cycle, um, but you know slightly different named. Um, and we will get into the actual usage of some of these lifecycle methods in the coding demo for this week. And so uh, now it is actually time to jump over to that coding demo. Um, before we jump over to the code, just a quick reminder, uh, of course, uh, like every week, you know, assignments and additional lecture resources will be available in Canvas. So check there for, for those resources, any announcements. And with that, we will jump over to the code and see how to start using fragments in our weather application. Okay, so here we are back over in Android Studio. To get started, we were going to create our first fragment. To do that, I'll come over to the left-hand side of the screen into the project pane. I'm gonna right-click on my package name, go to New, Package. And I'm gonna create a new package called location and hit enter. Now within that location package, I'm going to right click, go to new, and then scroll down to the bottom where it says fragment. And I'm going to select the fragment blank option. When I do that, that will pull open this new dialog that says new Android component. I'm gonna name this new fragment Location, Entry, Fragment. Now I wanna make sure that the Create Layout XML option is selected, and I'm going to deselect the option that says Include Fragment Factory Methods. And then we'll go ahead and click Finish. And we're gonna go ahead and add both of these files to our Git repo. So here we have automatically been opened up now into our new Fragment class. It's called Location Entry Fragment. It extends the Fragment class, and it automatically generated an implementation of the onCreateView method. And we'll see in onCreateView, it is inflating a layout called Fragment Location Entry. If we click into Fragment Location Entry, we can see what the layout looks like for this. Right now, it's a simple frame layout with a single text view. If we open this up into our design editor, we can see what this looks like here. Nothing overly exciting about this. Now, just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna go ahead and add a background color to this, and I'm gonna assign it color accent. And this is just so that we can better understand where this fragment is being drawn in our next section here. So now that we've seen how we can create a fragment very quickly, let's look at how we can show a fragment on the screen. And we can do this in a couple ways. So the first way we can do this is by opening up our activity main file in the left-hand side of the screen here. Once we have activity main created, we are going to add the fragment directly to this layout. So I'm gonna come down here below the constraint layout uh, tag, and I'm gonna add an angle bracket and type fragment. For layout width, I'm going to say match parent. For layout height, I'm gonna use a special constraint that will make it fit to 30% of the screen. So to do that, I will start by adding the height as 
zero DP. And then below that, I will say constraint height percent and type 0.3. So this should make the height of this fragment be 0.3 or 30% of the, the height of the screen. Then I'm gonna make sure that the name attribute, which is Android colon name, points to the fragment that we just created. This will indicate which class needs to be instantiated. And then I'm just going to make sure that the, the closing tag here is done. I'm gonna add an ID to the fragment here of location entry fragment. All right. So let's go and look at how this is looking in our design view. So you can see here that we, we have a fragment. However, we'll notice the little error in our component tree here indicating that this fragment is not yet constrained. So let's go ahead and make sure that that is constrained right now. So I'm gonna constrain this to the, the parent at the top, the left, and the right edges. So to do that, we can say constraint start to start of parent, constraint end to end of parent, constraint top to top of parent, so now that should constrain this properly to the top of the screen. So now that fragment is going to be correctly placed. However, the rest of the content is still going to be overlapping that. So let's update our uh, edit text, which is what the rest of the layouts are based on. And let's make that be constrained to the bottom of our fragment. So instead of saying constraint top to top of parent, we're going to change that to be constraint top to bottom of location entry fragment. To visualize this, we'll come back to our design view. So now we can see the enter zip code here is connected to our fragment. So that'll ensure that all of that content is pushed down below the fragment. Now there's one other small little thing to, to point out here. Notice here that our, our fragment just is this little gray box that says fragment. Uh, this, this tells us that a fragment will be there, but it doesn't really show us what that's actually going to look like at runtime. So there's actually something helpful we can do with this. So if we click that fragment and we come over into our, our attributes panel over here at the right hand side, we can come down to the, the all attributes section here. And if you look for the, the layout option here under all attributes, it's got a little wrench next to it because it's a, it's a tools uh, attribute. We can define at layout slash location entry, or excuse me, fragment location entry. So you see, as soon as we specify that, we now are seeing what that layout will look like as this fragment. So just one more time, if we go to what this looks like in the XML, we'll come up here to the, the fragment definition and we'll see this attribute tools colon layout equals at layout slash fragment location entry. So we're basically telling the, the design editor that the layout that will be used for this flat fragment is fragment location entry. And this is the same fragment we just defined for our fragment. So that's, that's the connection there. That's how they know how it's going to look. So now if we just run this real quick, we should be able to see what our app is looking like. And there we go. Now we see that our, our new fragment is being displayed at the top of the screen and the rest of the content is being pushed down below that. So this is our first kind of example of how we can compose fragments together 
to to customize the the UI. We can have multiple fragments on the screen at the same time, or we can combine fragments with other views. So let's go back over to Android Studio now. So we've seen how we can add a fragment in the XML, which is fine, but that's not how we'll do it most of the time. So let's remove this from our XML. Let's redeploy this real quick, just to make sure that everything's gonna be fine. Oops. You also need to make sure that we we reconstrain the edit text to the top. So again, we'll come down and specify constraint, whoop, constraint top to top of parent. So again, that's in our location, uh, or our zip code edit text, excuse me. If we go to the design view, just one more time, it should look like this, like we're familiar. So if we redeploy and come back to our emulator, we see now our layout is back to the way it was before. So this is what we would expect. All right, so let's go back over to Android Studio now, once again. This time we're going to programmatically add a fragment to the root view of our activity. So we're gonna open up main activity and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom of onCreate after we've initialized everything else. And then we're going to call support fragment manager dot begin transaction. So this gives us back a fragment a transaction class. Within that fragment transaction, we can define which fragments are added or removed. So after that, we can type add and I'm going to type location entry fragment. So I'm creating a new location entry fragment dot commit, oops, dot commit. And we'll see we have a, a small error here, basically telling us that we need to uh, provide a, a string or some other argument here. We can't pass just a fragment in. So in this case, I'm just going to pass null here. We're gonna update this in a moment, but we'll go ahead and run this now and see what this looks like by simply just adding the fragment to the root view. So if I open up the emulator here, we can see that nothing has actually shown up on the screen. So let's go back and fix this. Come to Android Studio. Again, we need to come back to this add call. Simply adding a fragment is not enough here. We need to tell it where to add the fragment. So let's remove this call to the tag here. And we're gonna come back to the, the add call. And if we look at the different implementations of add available to us, we see we have a few options here. The first one takes a fragment and a tag screen. That's the one we just used a second ago. That's not what we want in this case though. The next two each take an ID resource specifying the container view ID, and then take a fragment. So this is telling us that it wants to know what view group to add this fragment to. Well, in our case, to start, we want to add this fragment to the root of our activity. So if we come to activity main XML again, remember this is our main activity file. If we go over to the, the XML view, scroll to the very top, we're going to give the top level constraint layout an ID. And we're just going to call this root. So that's Android colon ID equals at plus ID slash root. Now, if we come back to main activity, within this add call, we can type r dot ID dot root comma location entry fragment. So now what this is saying is we're going to get the support fragment manager. We're going to begin a new fragment transaction so we can add a fragment. We're then going to specify an add call and we're going to say create a new location entry fragment and add it 
to the root view group of this layout. And then we're going to commit that fragment transaction so that it actually shows up on the screen. So if we go ahead and run this now and switch back over to our emulator, now we can see that that fragment is actually showing up on the screen. Now this might look a little bit odd because the, the fragment is covering some things, but not other things. Uh, that is uh, likely because of the, the elevation. The submit button has an elevation on it as part of its default styling. Um, and you can kind of see that as you click that button, the elevation changes. So that's why you see that. But the key thing in here is that we were able to add the fragment to our activity. So now let's add this fragment to a specific container instead of adding it uh, to the, the root layout as a whole. So again, come over to Android Studio and we wanna go over to Activity Main once again. And so this time we're gonna come below Activity Main here, or excuse me, below the, the constraint layout within Activity underscore Main. And we're going to create a new frame layout to act as the container for our fragments. So for height and width, we're going to do a, a width of match parent and a height of zero DP. And once again, we're going to do a height percent constraint of 0.3, which means 30% of the height of the screen. We are then going to add an ID of fragment container so that it's very clear that this frame layout is going to contain our fragments for us. Then we're going to constrain this again to the start, the end, and the top of the parent. So again, we'll do constraint top to top of parent, constraint end to end of parent and constraint start to start of parent. So if we come back to our design view, then we should see that we have the, the uh, fragment container sitting here uh, kind of behind the enter zip code elements. This will look very similar to what we did in the, the first example of adding it directly. So again, let's update this uh, zip code edit text here to sit below the fragment container instead of being aligned to the parent. So to do that, I can right click on that top constraint and click delete. And then I will drag that up and have that connect to the fragment container. Then in that layout section, I want this to sit essentially right up against the top. So I'll drag the, the bias up to the very top and I'll add a margin of 16 DP. So that should make the, the elements sit up here close to the fragment. However, you see that while the edit text is below the fragment, the rest of it is not. So let's go ahead and bring that back down there. Now everything should be sitting below that fragment. So now if we go back over to uh, our activity main XML, again, just to double check, we have our new frame layout called fragment container, and it is constrained to the top of the screen. So we should now be able to add our fragment to this container and have it sit just at the top of the screen instead of filling the whole screen. So if we come back, to main activity here, we'll come down here to our add call. And instead of passing r.id.root, we'll type fragment container. And now let's go ahead and redeploy this. And there we go. So now we see that fragment being placed in the top, being uh, added to our fragment container view.
This demonstrates to us that fragments can be used as composable UI containers and can be shown on the screen in a variety of ways. This can help developers build flexible user interfaces that adapt to different screen sizes and configurations. Okay, so let's go back over to Android Studio now and finish implementing our location entry fragment. All right, so we're back over here in main activity. If we open up location entry fragment, we'll see here that there is nothing really going on. At the moment, all it does is display that single text element. What we want it to do is provide all that same location entry functionality that we've had in main activity. So to implement this, we're going to start by going into activity main XML, and we're going to basically copy all of those location entry elements. So the title, the icon, the edit text and the enter button. We're just going to highlight those, copy them, and then move them over into the uh, fragment location entry XML file. So we'll paste those in, and we'll need to update this in a couple ways. So we'll convert the frame layout to a constraint layout, number one. Then we'll need to make sure that we have the, the app uh, tools attribute here. So come over to main activity, go to the very top and find where it says XMLNS colon app and simply cop that, copy that uh, and then paste that over here into your constraint layout. And so now if you, if we scroll around and if we look back at our design view, we should see that this is looking mostly correct. However, we see that our uh, elements are all here constrained at the bottom of the screen. So let's click on the zip code again, and let's constrain this to the top of the screen. And we'll see then that it immediately bounces right back up to where we expect it to be. And now because we're not really debugging this anymore, let's go back to our XML mode and we will remove that background color. And so now let's go ahead and redeploy this and see what happens. So I'll click run app, switch over to my emulator. And if we go ahead and rerun this, we see that we get a crash. So what's happening here? Well, we'll come back over to Android Studio. Let's open up our log cat here. And if we scroll up, we're going to see this error message here. And you should see something similar that says illegal state exception, find view by ID, zip code edit text must not be null. And this is coming from our main activity class. And so what's happening here is that inside of main activity and specifically inside of main activity on create, it's trying to find references to those views, but they don't actually exist anymore because they've pulled been pulled out from the, uh, They've been pulled out of main activities layout file and into the fragments layout file. So just real quickly to try and fix this, we're just going to kind of comment out these elements. You can do that by typing command uh, forward slash uh, or control forward slash, I believe on windows. So this simply comments that code out. So it won't be run or anything when the app is actually deployed. So let's run this one more time. Switch over to our emulator once again. And now this time we see correctly that our uh, new layout is on the screen correctly. However, it's kind of situated not quite how we would want. It's pushed much too far up to the top. So let's again go back over to Android Studio. 
And let's update the fragment container within Android uh, or within Activity Main. And let's update that container so that it fills the screen instead of uh, just being constrained to the uh, upper 30% of the screen. So again, we'll say uh, 0 dp, 0 dp. We will remove the constraint height percent. And then we'll make sure that this is constrained to the bottom by adding constraint bottom to bottom of parent. Now, if we come to our design view, we will see here again that this is now filling up the whole screen. So if we redeploy this one more time, go back over to our emulator, now we see a UI that looks pretty much the same as it did at the start of our demo here. However, if we try to do anything with this, we see that nothing actually happens. That's because we're not actually getting any references to those views in the fragment. We're not connecting the button. So let's finish translating this implementation over to the fragment. So if we go over to main activity, let's grab that code that we commented. We'll first uncomment it, then we will copy it, and then we're going to delete it. Then we're going to come over to our fragment. And there's one thing we need to do here first in on create view before we can copy this code over. So we see that on create view, it returns a view. It needs to return the view that you want to show on the screen. So by default, it simply returns the view that is returned by the layout and player. However, we need a chance to be able to update that as we are filling out this implementation. So we're going to modify this simply. We're going to create a variable to store the view returned by the layout and player. And then we'll hit return a couple times and we will return that view. So now in between those lines of code, we can update our UI, get view references, do anything else we need. So this then is where we are going to copy that code that we just pulled over from main activity. Now this should present a couple of errors to you. The first being find view by ID. It says unresolved reference find view by ID. Now why is this? Well, activities have a method called find view by ID. However, fragments do not. To do this on a fragment, we need to get a reference to view because that is the, the parent that was inflated. And then just type view dot find view by ID. So again, for this one, view dot find view by ID. So what this is doing is it's referencing that layout that was inflated and using that to look up the views. And now the only other thing we need to update here, actually I take that back, one of the other two things we need to update is we don't have a forecast repository at the moment. So we're going to comment that out and instead we're going to replace it with a toast. So we'll say toast.makeText. Now this requires a context. Now in the activity, we would pass in this as our context. However, fragments do not extend context, so they are not a context by default. However, they do have a convenient method for getting a context, which is called require context. So we'll pass in require context, and then we will just pass in a string that says something like zip code entered toast dot length short dot show. And now we need to update the previously existed toast. So we'll go up a couple lines and replace this with require context. Now we should be able to deploy this.
and we'll see if this now makes all of our elements interact how we would expect. Okay, so here we are. And if I enter a zip code and I hit submit, I can now successfully see the, uh, the toast that I would expect. And if I enter an invalid zip code, I see the invalid zip code as well. Now there's one other little piece that we might want to consider here. If we come back to main activity and we go into the layout for main activity, activity underscore main, we'll see here that that layout now essentially has two items. It has a frame layout and it has a recycler view. Now the way that uh, views are typically drawn is there's an implicit Z order, meaning generally anything you define after a previous element will draw on top of it. Now what this means is that in some cases, if both your recycler view and your frame layout were being drawn on the screen, the recycler view might prevent the frame layout from being uh, interacted with. So just to be safe, we're going to grab the frame layout and we're going to put it below the recycler view here. And just one more time, let's deploy this and make sure everything is working as we expect. All right, so here we go. We'll interact with this and we see the toast. So that is working correctly for us. So now we're back over into Android Studio and we want to work on loading the forecast data when our button is clicked. We want to get back to that functionality, being able to actually see that weather data. So we are going to create a, a new interface by right-clicking the package, going to new Kotlin file or class. We're going to select interface and we're going to name this app navigator and hit enter. So this creates a new interface for us called app navigator. So this uh, is going to signify a way for us to indicate if we want to navigate from one screen to the other. Within that interface, we're going to define a single method for now. So we'll type fun to indicate that this is going to be a function. And then we'll type the name of the function, which will be navigate to current forecast. And then we're going to pass in a zip code. And that zip code will be a non nullable string. So now we have this navigator, we need to have some class out there that implements this and defines this behavior so that if we call this method, we actually navigate to our current forecast. So for us, our main activity is going to be this class that navigates app navigator. So we'll scroll to the top of main activity here. After the app compat activity call, we are going to add a comma, and then we're going to type app navigator. So now this makes main activity implement app navigator. And as soon as you add app navigator, you should see a little squiggly line indicating there's an error in main activity. And it's going to tell you main activity is not an abstract class and does not implement navigate to current forecast. So basically this is telling you, you either need to make this class abstract or you need to implement that method. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom to a uh, area after on options item selected. And we are going to implement on or uh, on navigate to forecast. So Oops, excuse me there. I, I misnamed that. So <laughs> navigate to current forecast. There we go. So we see here we we type override fun navigate to current forecast. And again, we're taking in a zip code there. So now how do we actually uh, navigate to this forecast? How do we actually show that data? Well, 
as we were doing that previously, we were using the forecast repository dot load forecast, and we would pass it in a zip code. So now in the activity, whenever navigate to current forecast is called by some external class, we will call load forecast on our repository, which will then ultimately show that weather data. So how are we going to actually call this method then? Well, for that, we're going to go to location entry fragment. So location entry fragment is now the, the controller for this location entry. It's the thing responsible for showing the layout. It's also the thing responsible for handling the click and will be responsible for telling the activity that we should navigate and show the forecast data. So how do we actually get a hold of this app navigator so that we can indicate back to the activity? There's a few different ways we could go about doing this. Uh, some of them involve dependency ejection, which we'll not be getting into right now. However, there's another common pattern for doing this um, within a fragment. So to start, go to the top of your location entry fragment, and we're going to type private late init var app navigator colon app navigator. So this is defining a non-nullable variable called app navigator that will be initialized before we ever use it. The reason we need to make this late init is because we need to initialize it within on attach. If you just start typing on attach and hit enter, Android Studio will automatically implement the on attach method. Now, if you remember from the lecture notes, on attach is one of the lifecycle methods. It happens very early in the fragment lifecycle. And essentially, this is when the fragment is added to the activity. So, this is really our first point where we can get some type of reference to. The, the activity or the context. Now, because fragments have to live within an activity, we can take advantage of that fact. And because we expect our activity to implement this app navigator in interface, we can assume that this context is our app navigator. So to do this, we can type app navigator equals context as app navigator. This as keyword here is how we cast a variable to another type. So what we're saying here is that we want to assign app navigator the value of context. So for us, that means that app navigator will now have a reference to our activity. If for some reason our activity doesn't implement app navigator. Let's say we forgot to add it. This would crash when you tried to run it. So it would quickly tell you that you missed something in your code. Now that we have this reference to app navigator, we can come down here to our button click. We can remove this toast. And here where we used to call into the repository, we can say app navigator dot navigate to current forecast and we pass in the zip code. And then I'll go ahead and delete this commented outline. So now this should all work. When we click on the button, it's going to call navigate to current forecast on the app navigator interface. That is then going to come into main activity and come into this method, which will then trigger the load forecast call on the repository. So we have essentially the same flow of data that we had before, but now it's starting in the fragment and being handled ultimately by the activity. If we run the app, we should see that it is now much more functional than it was a few minutes ago. If we enter a zip code, click submit code, we now see that we have our list again. Although we also see that our UI is a little bit messed up, but don't worry, we are going to fix that next. Now it's time to create a fragment to display our forecast data. So to do that, to start, we're going to come back over to our project pane on the left hand side of the screen. 
Once again, click our package name here, go new package, and we're gonna type this one out as forecast, and then hit okay. So again, we're gonna create a new fragment by right-clicking that new forecast package, going to new, fragment, and we're gonna select a blank fragment. We're gonna name this one current forecast fragment. And once again, we will let it create the XML layout, but we do not want it to create the factory methods. We'll click finish, and then we'll go ahead and click add once again to add the files to Git. So just like before, we now have a current forecast fragment with onCreateView implemented. And again, we're gonna update our onCreateView implementation to assign the inflated view to a view variable and then return that view later on in the method. So now let's go to activity main. And this time we are going to grab the recycler view. We're gonna copy that, delete it from activity underscore main. And then we are going to paste it in over here in the newly created fragment current forecast.xml file. We're going to click on one of the little app attributes there, which is giving us an error. And then we will hit Alt Enter to fix that issue. And then we will convert our frame layout to a constraint layout. And now just to double check that this looks correct, let's go to our design view. And we see that our daily forecast is not taking up the whole screen. It's actually sticking just there down at the bottom. Why is that? Well, back over in our XML, we can see that our constraints are not quite right. We'll see that we have assigned, we have constrained the top of our constraint layout to the bottom of enter button. However, enter button doesn't exist in this layout. So let's fix this. We'll add constraint top to top of parent. Now, if we go back to our design view, we see a preview of what this list will look like, and it's filling the whole screen. However, it looks a little bit odd because we have uh, the this margin on the left, the right, and the top. So let's come over to the, the layout attributes panel here, and let's just change those margins from 16 to zero. And now this still looks pretty good because each individual item view is applying margin on its own. However, also we have this gray background on the item views. Um, so let's just quickly go to our item view, which again is called item daily forecast XML. And we're just gonna remove that gray background property. So now if we go back over to fragment underscore current underscore forecast dot XML, we see now that we have this nice white looking list. So this is gonna look very natural within our existing UI. So now if we go back over to main activity and we scroll up to on create, we have all this implementation here for the uh, recycler view. Well, that's going to break as soon as we try to run this again because the main activity doesn't have a recycler view. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this over into our, uh, our new fragment that we created. And so really this is going to be this, this whole block of code here. So from creating the recycler view, uh, creating the adapter and observing the, uh, uh, the repository for new data. So I'll copy that. We'll go over to our current forecast fragment, down into on create view, and we're gonna paste that in. And just like before, uh, we're gonna need to update this a little bit. So our find view by ID call, we just need to update to view.findViewById once again. We have an error in observer. We need to click into it and hit Alt Enter and then import the Android X.lifecycleObserver class. 
And now we have a couple other little issues here. So we are missing a forecast repository. We are missing a temp display setting manager. We're missing this method call called show forecast details. And we have this issue with passing this in as a context. This one is easily solved for us by again, passing in require context as a method call. If we go over to main activity and we scroll down, we can copy this show forecast details function and we can just bring this over into our fragment. So that's a simple copy and paste. However, within that, once again, we need to replace the call to this with require context. So now we're down to just the two errors here. We're still missing a temp display setting manager. So let's go to main activity and let's copy that implementation and paste that over here into current forecast. And then again, we will copy the uh, initialization of that from on create and down here in on create view at the very top we will go ahead and initialize this so this time the initialization will say temp display settings manager equals temp display settings manager and we will call require context to pass it the context now notice there that in main activity we didn't delete temp display manager because in main activity we still need it for our menu to work so we just copy and pasted it to simplify the the adding of it to our fragment and now the one last thing that we can bring over is the forecast repository so if we copy that and again we paste it over here into our new fragment we'll go back over to main activity and we'll see here that now in our navigate to current forecast method call uh, we have a problem we no longer have the forecast repository. So uh, we can't load that data. Now what we want to do instead is we want to actually show the new fragment that we've just created. So now our current forecast fragment is going to be responsible for loading and showing the data. So all main activity has to do is add that fragment to the screen. So to do that, we will type support fragment manager dot begin transaction dot replace r dot id dot fragment container comma and we will create a new instance of a current forecast fragment and then we will commit that fragment transaction. So now main activity has, has been properly updated. Let's go back and just double check on our current forecast fragment. And we'll see here that we have fixed all the errors. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I'll redeploy and we will switch over to our emulator. So far so good, nothing has crashed. It's still working as expected. And if I enter a zip code and hit enter, we see that the, the screen has updated. However, we don't see any forecast data. Well, why is that? Well, if we go back over to Android Studio, if we go to main activity, where it says navigate to current forecast, we used to be loading the forecast data. However, now all we're doing is adding the fragment. So if we go to the fragment, we notice that we do have a reference to the forecast repository. However, we're never actually calling load on the forecast. And part of the reason for that is that the current forecast fragment doesn't know anything about the zip code. So it wouldn't even be able to call load forecast. So what we need to do is somehow provide a way for us to pass the selected zip code to current forecast fragment.
Now, to do that, we're going to come down to the bottom of current forecast fragment. And we're going to create a companion object. Now, we mentioned this before, but again, as a review, a companion object is an object scoped to an instance of current forecast fragment in this case. Um, ultimately, what that means for us, if you're familiar with Java, is that by creating a companion object, we can replicate the same type of behavior that you're used to of with static methods in Java. And we'll, and we'll see what that looks like in just a moment. So within companion object, the first thing we're going to do here is type const val key zip code equals key underscore zip code. So this is creating a, a simple uh, key constant for us because we're going to effectively pass in a key value pair to this fragment and use that to get access to the current zip code. Now, how are we going to use this? Well, we're going to create a method called new instance for this fragment. Creating a new instance method is a common pattern for fragments on Android. Essentially, the new instance method becomes a factory method for the fragment that takes in any arguments that that fragment needs to operate correctly. So in our case, it is going to take in a zip code, and then we can use that zip code to load the required data. So we will start off by typing fun, again, because fun indicates we're going to define a new function. We're going to type new instance as our function name. We're going to define an argument called zip code of type string. And then we're going to define the return type as current forecast fragment. Now within that method body, we're going to start off by creating a new instance of our fragment. So we'll type val fragment equals current forecast fragment. Then we're going to create a bundle val args equals bundle. Now a bundle is a, a fairly simple class defined to store key value pairs in Android. Um, and you can use bundles to pass things to intents or to pass them around with uh, fragment arguments. So now that we have this bundle, we can put the zip code into it. We'll type args dot put string put string and we'll type key zip code. And we'll, so we'll pass in that zip code constant that we used. And then we will pass in the zip code value that was passed to this method. So that has defined what values are going to be put in that bundle. And then now we set the bundle into our fragment by typing fragment dot arguments equals args. And as the very last thing, we will return the fragment variable. So uh, now that we have defined how we are going to now pass this data over, the next thing we need to do is actually uh, get this data uh, from the the arguments when we uh, call on create view. So the way we can do this is in top of on create view here, we are going to call val zip code equals arguments dot get string. And again, we can reuse that key underscore zip code constant here. So this will ensure that we're using the same key. And in this case, we can simply type arguments, and that'll give us access to the bundle that was passed into this fragment when it was created. So essentially, we are down here in new instance. We are creating the bundle, putting the zip code into it, and assigning it to the fragment. Now, and up here, when the fragment is creating its view, we're getting that bundle and looking for the value in it. Now, there's one little thing to point out here. We have this little error here saying that only safe or non-null calls are allowed here. 
basically what this is telling you is that you have no guarantee that the value you want is going to be here. And so this might end up returning null. For us, since we expect that value to be there, we can fix this by adding two exclamation points. Essentially what this will do is if for any reason arguments is null, which it shouldn't be in our expected case, then it'll crash and it'll crash specifically telling you, hey, this was null when you didn't expect it to be. So now that we have the zip code, down here at the bottom of onCreateView, we can call forecast repository dot load forecast and we can pass in that zip code. Although now if you look at this, it's gonna give you a it's gonna give you an error here saying a required string found a nullable string. So uh, we can just kind of quickly work around that by going back up here to our arguments call and using the Elvis operator again, which is question mark colon. And if for some reason the call to uh, this get the zip code returns a null value, we'll pass in an empty string here. So this will prevent anything from crashing and makes the call to load forecast happy. So now our fragment is ready to go. The last thing we have to do is go to main activity and we actually need to pass the zip code in. So here, where before we were just creating a new instance of that fragment directly, now what we want to do is type current forecast fragment dot new instance. So this is going to call that new instance method from the companion object. And we will pass in the zip code. If we run this now, we should be able to see that loaded forecast data. So I'll enter a zip code, I'll hit submit, and as we expected, we now see our forecast. However, we don't see any obvious way of entering a new zip code, which is a problem. And if we hit back, it simply closes the application. So let's fix that. And let's add a way to show the location entry fragment again if we need it. So we'll come back over to main activity here. And what we want to do is come over to current forecast fragment. And then we're going to open up the layout for current forecast fragment. Now what I want to do is add a floating action button to this layout. To do that, we'll come over here to our palette and we're going to click on the buttons section. And down at the bottom, we see this item that says floating action button. I want to drag that over into our UI. When we do that, it's going to ask you for a resource to use as the icon for that button. Um, because this is showing that location fragment, I'm going to use that same location icon that we're using when we enter a location and I'll hit OK. Now this is going to ask you if you want to add a new dependency to the project because the floating action button is part of a different library. Uh, this, is, this is a good thing. This is nice that it's asking us for this. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And this is going to add a new dependency which might take a minute to update. And you should ultimately see a new item added uh, to your build.gradle file. So if I open up my apps build.gradle file and I scroll down to the bottom, you should see something like this. It should see Google Android material colon material 1.1. So this is a library filled with widgets that adhere to Android's material uh, design principles. So once that's added, if you open up current forecast fragment again, um, we'll go back to the layout. We see here that our floating action button now appears on the screen. However, this doesn't quite look what, how we would expect it to. And if you look in the component tree here, we actually see that we have a, a little error here. Again, it's not constrained. So let's use the design editor here and we'll connect this to the right hand side of the screen and the bottom of the screen there. 
and we want to add some margin here. So we'll add a bottom margin of 16 and a right margin of 16. So that's looking a little bit better. Now let's go to the XML and let's just look at how uh, this is being laid out in the XML. So we see that it is a floating action button right here. It has an ID of floating action button. Let's go ahead and update that ID to something more useful like location entry button. Now another thing that we notice is that the, the icon is black. However, I want that icon to be white because it's gonna match the rest of our theme a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do, instead of creating a white version of the icon, I can use the Android colon tint property and I can pass in the white color. To pass in white, which is a, a default color available to you, you can type at Android colon color slash white. After adding that, if I go back to the design view, now we can see that that icon appears as white instead. So let's just go ahead and redeploy this and see what that button is looking like so far. So we'll enter a zip code real quick here. We'll click submit. And now we see we have a floating action button down in the bottom of our screen. you also notice that after it does a build for the first time, the action button now actually looks correct in the design editor as well, which is a very nice touch. It gives you a better sense of what the UI is gonna look like. So now we have a button. The next thing we need to do is define a means of indicating that when that button is clicked, we wanna to navigate to a new screen. Now, hopefully that sounds familiar. That's basically what we did before with our app navigator. When we clicked the load forecast button, we created a method that indicated that we should show a new fragment. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Again, we're going to open up app navigator. And this time we're going to create another new method. This time it's going to be called navigate to location entry. And because this doesn't require any special uh, parameters or anything, we don't need to pass any in. We'll go over to main activity. And again, if we scroll up to the top, there should be an error again saying we need to implement navigate to location entry. So we'll come down here to the bottom and after navigate to current forecast, we will implement navigate to location entry. This time it's gonna look very much the same. So we will type support fragment manager dot begin transaction dot replace r dot id dot fragment container. And this time we'll simply create a new fragment and pass that in. So location entry fragment dot commit. Now we need to go back to our current forecast fragment and actually connect this on click listener so that when you click it, something actually happens. So let's go to on create view. And we're going to get a reference to the floating action button. To do that, we'll create a variable called location entry button equals view dot find view by id r dot id dot location entry button whoops that something got messed up there let me retype that so that it's a little bit more clear my apologies so again we'll type a create a variable called location entry button of type floating action button and I'll hit alt enter to import floating action button as a type equals view dot find view by id r dot id dot location entry button 
So now that we have a reference to that button, we'll add a click listener. Location entry button dot set on click listener, which is just the same as with a regular button. And now we will use app navigator. However, we don't have a reference to app navigator. So again, we want to do the same thing as we did in location entry fragment. We're going to grab the same implementation of app navigator and on attach, copy that, come back to current forecast of fragment and paste that in. Now, when we come back to our on click listener, if we type app navigator dot navigate to location entry, everything should work correctly. So once again, let's run this. And here we are in our fragment again. So this is our location entry fragment, which is added the first time our activity is created. We will enter a zip code and click submit. That call to submit is using the app navigator to tell main activity that it should show the current forecast fragment. Current forecast fragment shows that displayed weather data and also provides a button here to again go back to enter a new zip code. So that interplay between the fragments through that interface is a very common pattern in Android and lets us have more control over where our uh, logic is encapsulated. So in this case, you know, displaying the list data was encapsulated into one fragment, getting the location encapsulated into another fragment, and interacting between the two is handled by the common parent, which is the activity. So next week, we're actually going to walk through a more advanced in kind of the the new Google recommended way of handling this type of uh, fragment navigation. Um, but it's really good to know the basics here because they are fundamentally what the the more advanced version is doing. So uh, next week we are going to continue to build on this. We are going to create a couple more fragments next week and show you another way of navigating between them. So hopefully uh, you can stay up to date, get these fragments created, and next week we will build on that and really start to make our app look and feel more like a modern weathern app. As always, if you have uh, any questions or anything, uh, you can reach out to me by email, and I will see you all in uh, the next lecture.